Okay, so, um, yeah, so I, you don't have a whiteboard, right? Okay, yeah. so um, you'll uh, have to take a piece of paper and talk me through this. So the first step here would be to draw a nice big picture of the situation. So go ahead and think about this for a second. So what what, what are we going to put in our picture here? What's your picture going to look like? Um, it would look like a, um, a, a solid cylinder, so it would look like a circle rolling down a hill. Right. And the... Um, the let me think here. I would I would probably put the the slant going from up high on the left and down to the right. But anyway, so that um, length of that incline would be ten meters. Actually, I'll drop the other way. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, it's just so that it's going mm -hmm. in the positive X direction ah, for whatever reason. Good okay. I agree. Okay. And and uh, and um, let's see. And then I would just put tw the, the um, twenty degrees at the, at the angle to the right. At the top angle or the bottom angle? The yeah, bottom when angle. They, when they give you an angle for an inclined plane, they generally mean the angle at the horizontal. Good. So that's important. We have okay. to figure out where to put the numbers in our picture. Good. And um, I would put 10 meters at the top of the top of the um, Now, does the, the 10 meters the represent the horizontal, the vertical, or the hypotenuse? Uh, the hypotenuse. That's right. That's a little bit tricky. But if they say the plane has a length of 10 meters, what they're really telling us... I'm kind of running out of room here, but they're telling us that this hypotenuse here, that's the length of the plane, that's 10 meters. They haven't told us the vertical height, they've only told us the length. Okay, good. Okay, well that's all I'm going to plug and in. And of course we'd want to draw the cylinder. Um, and I think that you noticed that you wouldn't really draw it like a cylinder because from the side a cylinder looks like a circle, as I think you mentioned. So, mm -hmm. here's our cylinder. There's one number we haven't put in yet, which is the five meter number. Where can I put the five meter number? In the middle of as the As the circle. radius. Right, as half of the end. Yeah. So it's always good to put all the numbers okay. possible into your picture. So that is a five meter uh, radius. Okay, good. Uh, all right, so that gives us our approach here. Okay, um, now I guess we can go ahead and start solving. Now, how do we know that this is a good conservation of energy problem? Because we have one object, and um, um, that's the only really thing I can see. One say. object, and I it's mean, moving, it and it, it, we're looking at it not just in a brief collision, but over an extended period of time. It takes time for it to go from the top to the bottom. Okay. okay. There's actually some other clue that this is good conservation of energy problem that uh, maybe I should review later. Or maybe, maybe I should uh, review that now, actually. I, I should have mentioned that before. Conservation of energy is useful for problems that ask you about speed or distances. Conservation of energy is useful for problems that ask you about speeds or distances. And you can see why from the whiteboard here. Why is it good, a good approach when they're asking you about, uh, about speed? Because the speed appears in the, kin in the kinetic energy. And why is this a good approach when they're asking you about distance? Because the vertical distance appears in the gravitational, en in the gravitational energy. So questions about speed or distance are types of questions where it's good to use this approach instead of using Newton's second law. Remember that your first guess for this type of problem, uh, when we were talking about these at the beginning of the session, you were, your first guess was that this, uh, these types of problems were it was a good situation for using Newton's second law. And you were right. You can use Newton's second law here, but it's considerably harder. It's much better to use conservation of energy. So how do you know when you should use conservation of energy instead of Newton's second law? Well, specifically for problems that are about speed or distance. Okay? Okay. Okay. One second. Speed or distance coupled with the fact that it's one object yeah, over a period of time. Yeah, One second. Okay. Okay. All right, so now let's go through our steps here. Um, now, one step that I mentioned that you don't want to forget is if you're going to use conservation of energy, you must label the initial and the final points. So tell me, wh where are our initial and our final points here? Um, the initial is right where you have it, or would be the top, and then um, final would be at the bottom of the uh, plane, inclined plane. So I put a dot here for the final point. 
Now actually the initial point is not precisely where I draw the cylinder because the, the, the question is really I implying that the cylinder started at the very top up here. So the initial point would be at the very top of the inclined plane. I actually drew the cylinder when it was in the middle of the process. I drew the cylinder when it was in the middle of the process of rolling down. But the initial point would have been up here at the top because we know it's going to roll down the entire length of 10 meters. So it's important to really label the I and the F in your picture. Okay, and now we're ready to start using Newton's second law, and we're going to start going through our equations for that. So do you remember what's the first equation? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. I should have said we're using conservation of energy. So what's the first most basic equation for conservation of energy that we can write down? Um, total mechanical energy E, and the E initial equals E final. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write that down. Okay. All right, now we've started and we have to start plugging in. So what would be the next step that we can plug in here? What are the terms we should plug in? Uh, uh, gravitational um, energy initial plus translational kinetic energy initial plus rotational kinetic energy equals... Initial. Initial rotational initial. kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. Good equals gra gravitational um, um, potential energy mm -hmm. Good. Um, final Good. plus um, translational kinetic energy final um, plus uh, rotational kinetic energy final. Okay. All right, now um, any idea what we should do next? break it down even further? Yeah, that's a good instinct. But before we do that, th we've, uh, maybe now would be a good time to already start plugging in. We already know what some of these terms are. Which of these terms do we already know? Um, well, we already know the kinetic final, of the, the translational kinetic final. Yeah, how do you know that? What is that? Because it's, the, because it's stopping. So at the end, it's, it'll be at rest. So the um, final kinetic why, energy... Why do you say that? Because the object will come to a rest. Why? And so, why will it come to a rest? Because yeah. how do I know it will come to a rest? Because it says it in the problem. Oh, the speed at the bottom. Right. Yeah. So, what was the question? Um, the question is, what is the uh, what is the, the speed at the bottom? That's right. So, in fact, we definitely don't want to assume that it's going to come to rest. So, we're not assuming that there's like a barrier here at the bottom. Oh, I see. We're not okay. assuming that there's any barrier. Uh, maybe to make this a little bit clearer, what we're basically assuming, even though the problem didn't say so, well, we could be assuming that down at the bottom it turns horizontal and just keeps rolling off at whatever speed okay. it was at. Um, but even if you don't draw that in, there's no reason to um, to think that it's going to come to a rest. And even if it did, even if there was a barrier, we should still try to find the speed the instant before it hits the barrier. So so we, um, so we, anyway, the upshot is that we can't assume that the kinetic energy at the bottom is uh, zero. But that was really on the right track, so what you're trying to do is figure out which of these terms are zero. Well, that's exactly what okay. we want to do. Some of these terms will be zero. So think carefully about that. Let's take think a little bit more about that. Which of these terms do we know will be zero? Hmm... You might need to go back and reread the question or relook at our picture. Okay. Okay, the initial um, the initial um, kinetic energy would now be zero? Yeah, that's right. Um, because uh, it, the object starts at rest. Now, the problem did not specifically say that it started at rest. Maybe I should have said that. But oftentimes they don't say that on this type of problem and you're, ju you're just expected to infer it. Um, we're just we're supposed to really infer here that the ob it started at the top uh, at rest. Um, so oftentimes that might not be stated explicitly. So the most natural interpretation of this problem is that when the cylinder was at the top, it was motionless, and then it started rolling down. All right. So that was the uh, so so who was zero again? Uh, the translational kinetic energy initial. So I'll just go ahead and cross that out. Okay. Anybody else who's zero? Um, well, that would mean that the rotational kinetic energy was also zero. Initially or finally? Uh, initially. Good. That's right. 
So again, if the object's not moving, it can't have any kinetic energy, either translational or rotational. Okay, good. Anybody else who, who can say is zero? Um, well, wouldn't we say that the ground potential final is zero? Good, that's right. So it's most natural to say that the ground is the bottom of the inclined plane. It's most nat so, so what's the height at the final point? Zero. Yeah, the most natural thing is to say that the height at the final point is zero, and then there's no energy at that final point, no potential energy, no gravitational potential energy. So that term will cross out as well. All right, now we're making some good progress because we started with six terms and now we're only down to three. So things are a lot simpler. OK, 